every new legendary Pokémon is broken, especially the ones in the DLC. Stuff like Urshifu, Calyrex, and Ogre Pond were designed only to trick competitive players into buying the DLC. Give it to me! Give it to me! So what the hell happened here? The Loyal Three are the new legendary trio from the Teal Mask DLC, made up of Monkey Dory, Pheasantipity, and Ogie Dogie. And when they got announced, I was excited. I mean, the legendaries in these DLCs are always really strong. Three new, probably powerful poison types sounded extremely promising. Iron Hands and Fluttermane have been the menaces of the official competitive Pokemon metagame since they've been allowed in events, and poison types are great against both of them because they resist both fairy and fighting. I expected these three to become staples of the competitive metagame. Let's take a look at how they did at the first unofficial event, Beast Coast Savari Zone. None of the three made day two, but th that's okay. I'm sure it's just a matter of people figuring out how to use the new Pokemon. I'm sure Peoria will be better. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okie dokie made top eight on a really cool team. I'm sure the other two will get more popular at the next regional, and they're all gone again. I I'll drop the act. These three suck. But why? Well, that's what we're going to get to the bottom of today. Like a bad parental figure, I'm going to point out each and every minor flaw of these guys, so we can figure out why they're such a disappointment. First, let's start with Bird Brain over here, Pheasantipity. Looks pretty promising at first. Has a pretty good defense profile, a cool typing with Poison and Fairy, and a pretty good supportive move pool with stuff like Taunt, Icy Wind, and Tailwind. So what's the big problem here? Well, in Pokemon, it's not good enough to be able to fill a role. You need to be the best at the role, at least within the context of your team. Every support move I just named is also learned by Tornadus, and Tornadus learns a bunch more too, like Scary Face and Rain Dance. So in a straight up support battle, Pheasantipity always loses. But there must be something unique about it, right? Well, it's probably the best at triggering the Loyal 3's signature ability Toxic Chain, which gives their damaging moves a chance to badly poison their targets. But if you're trying to spread around poison, why not just play Glamora, who can spread it around without relying on chance with both its signature move Mortal Spin and its ability Toxic Debris. Now, you might try to defend Fezendipity by saying, well, it's like Glamora and Tornadus rolled into one, so it has its place. And you're right, Pokemon that do the job of two different Pokemon, but just a little worse than both, are sometimes powerful. We call those Roll Compression Pokemon. For example, I think that Sinistra is a pretty good Pokemon because it roll compresses Amoongus and Cresselia. Roll compression Pokemon usually do fill their two roles worse than the two separate Pokemon would, but they still need to be actually good at filling those roles that they've been given. Pheasantipity isn't actually that good at doing support or spreading around poison. It's just two things it literally is capable of doing. As far as its hidden ability, Technician, it boosts the power of low base power moves. But look at this thing's attacking stats, just please stop wasting your time. Next, let's talk about the kid who thinks he's smarter than everyone else. Monkey Dory. This guy's stats look like we're starting to get somewhere. Pretty fast, good special attack stat, pretty frail on the physical side, but respectable on the special side. And its move pool is pretty solid too. Sledge Bomb, Psychic, Fake Out, Parting Shot, and Taunt are all great but Toxic Chain is a little slow of an ability on such an offensive, frail Pokemon, so let's try to use its other ability. What? What is it again? Uh, Frisk. Ah, uh, okay. Now the cracks are starting to show. Thanks to a rule change in Scarlet and Violet, Frisk is literally a useless ability in competitive, because you know what items all your opponent's Pokemon are holding before the game even starts. It's on the team sheet they have to give you. Since Toxic Chain is only okay on this Pokemon, we're left with a frail, fast special attacker with a pretty good selection of supporting moves, with an ability that only comes up every now and then. Doesn't that sound a lot like Fluttermane? But Fluttermane is faster, hits harder, and the combination of Stab, Fairy, and Ghost is way better than Stab, Poison, and Psychic. And sure, Monkey Dory does have Fake Out and Parting Shot, two very strong moves that Fluttermane doesn't have access to, but those moves are both utilized way more effectively on bulky defensive Pokemon like Incineroar, as opposed to frail offensive ones like Monkey Dory. Now, it might seem unfair at first to say Monkey Dory is bad because it's worse than Fluttermane. After all, Fluttermane is broken. But don't forget, Monkey Dory is legendary Pokemon, so it's extremely unlikely that it'll ever be legal in a format that doesn't include other extremely powerful special attackers like Fluttermane or Landorus Incarnate. Hey, before we get into the last guy, subscribe. Thanks. Finally, Finally, let's look at Okie Dokie, the least disappointing of the three. Thanks to its fighting typing, it's not exactly the flutter main wall I was hoping it would be when we saw it, but it has some legitimate usefulness to it. First of all, it's got great bulk and pretty good defensive typing, with only three weaknesses, and its ability Guard Dog is pretty strong. If you try to intimidate Okie Dokie, its attack stack goes up instead, and you can't force it to switch out in battle, but the first part's what's important. This ability is like Defiant, but worse in almost every way since it won't trigger off stuff like Icy Wind, and you can still get your attack lowered by stuff like Charm. If this guy just had Defiant, it honestly might be a pretty strong Pokemon, but it doesn't. And we already have a Fighting-type Defiant Pokemon that really punishes you for hitting it with Icy Wind or intimidating it. Annihilate. Plus, their defensive stats are pretty similar too. And Annihilate is faster. Almost any move you want on Oogie Doki, Annihilate also learns. So, unless you have a very specific reason that you need a Poison Fighting-type, Oogie Doki isn't gonna be the guy. Not to mention the fact that Annihilate is like the fourth best fighting 
fighting type right now, behind Iron Hands and the two Urshifu forms. So Okie Doki is a side graded version of the fourth best fighting type in the format. Just think about that. That's what the best loyal three member is. So enough reasons why these guys aren't good yet? Think I'm being too harsh? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.